So, um, so far we have a monophonic synth, but with only one tone, it says up here, um, as indeed we do. Um, I'm just going to get rid of some of the clutter in here because it makes it a little bit easier to see what's going on. So I'm just going to get rid of those because we know what they're doing now. Um, and I'm going to raise that up a little bit. Um, <coughs> so we will add some additional tones, additional oscillators, in order to create different timbres and a means of selecting between them. Um, so at the moment we just have this cycle object which is giving us a sine tone. So what if, what if we want to produce uh, maybe a sawtooth, a uh, square wave, or a, uh, a triangle wave, for example? These are, these are some basic oscillators which Max will uh, offer us in the form of various objects. So um, we, will, uh, we will add... Um, well, let's start with one additional oscillator for now. Um, and that will be a uh, saw as you can see from the example there. And we don't need to put in a... we could put in a, an argument to give it a starting frequency, but I won't, I won't bother. In fact, I could get rid of this 440 here because it's now being overridden by the M2F object anyway. Um, but I, I can send messages to it to control its frequency in exactly the same way into its left-hand inlet, which I will do. And... Uh, so we now have we now have two oscillators. That's fairly straightforward, and we could add others, and I will perhaps in a minute. Um, but uh, I could, if I were to connect that to um, our multiplication output there, then well, we're just going to get both of them. We'll get a cycle and a sawtooth wave at the same time, which maybe isn't what we want. I mean, I, we can we can do it if you like. Uh, let the patch. Okay, so we hear that the saw. We don't really hear the cycle because it's kind of obliterated by the sawtooth, which is more um, abrasive and strident. But uh, the, the cycle object is there as well. But maybe we want to be able to choose between them. Well, we can do that <coughs> by means of, as you can see down here, the selector object. And I need to uh, show you a couple of things in order to explain what the selector object does. We have in Max various ways of choosing between inputs or outputs on particular objects. Um, we, we looked at the select object that, uh, that you know, you send messages to that and it will send a bang out of a particular output, uh, outlet, uh, depending on what number or message it receives. You can do a similar thing with an object called root, which we haven't looked at yet. Um, and we have looked also at the gate object. So if I make a gate object, whoops, not the patch. Gate object. <coughs> Um, this is a this is a means of routing object. It'll be, become obvious why in a minute. Um, but if I were to make a button object, actually no, I won't. I'll make a number object. Send that through our gate. Remember that the if we look at our inlets here, the left inlet determines whether a gate is open or closed. The right inlet determines what's going through it. So I need a toggle object in order to um, to determine whether the gate is open or closed. So if it's open, the message can get through. If it's closed, the message doesn't. So this just remains 17. These digit changes don't make any difference. What are we actually changing to gate in order to open or close it? Well, if you remember, the toggle output is 0 or a 1. So it's a 0 or 1 that gate understands as being an open or a closed message. Well, <coughs> that's if we have one inlet and one outlet in gate. But we can add additional outlets so that we can choose between them. So if I add four outlets, um, well, the, the argument for them, we get four outlets. And um, I will just add some more number boxes so that they come out of each of those. There we go. Um, then we might, you know, we, gate basically enables us to, determine, to decide which of those outlets this message will go to. But we need a way of determining which of those outlets it will output from. Um, and a toggle object isn't going to do that because it only has two states. It has on or it has off or it has one or it has zero. Um, so we'll get rid of toggle and instead we'll put in another number box which makes it look a little confusing. But um, hopefully you'll understand what's going on in a minute. Um, zero continues to mean off. So Nothing will be open if it's reading a zero, so I'll just make sure it has sent a zero. So sending a zero now, and nothing will happen. But <coughs> if I send number one, 
the first outlet is open, just as it was in the, the original gate object without any arguments on it. So the first outlet will receive data. If I change it to a number 2, then only the second outlet will receive that data. If I change it to a number 3, only the third outlet, and so on. Whoops, 4. <coughs> so this is in the um, control domain. This is max object. But much the same thing is true in the signal domain. We can, we can use what's called a gate tilde object. And it operates in exactly the same way. You can see that um, it looks very much the same, aside from the, the extra squiggle. Um, so I won't, don't really need to say too much more about that. That refers to outlets, how many outlets you have. But we might want to choose between inlets as well. Um, actually, I could also compare these two objects, the G-switch and the G... well, G-switch 1 and G-switch 2. G-switch 2 is very much like the gate we've got up there, allowing one inlet and up to two outlets. So in, in, in having... Uh, prettiness, you, you compromise um, functionality to some extent. Um, and then over here we've got a G-switch which accommodates two inlets and you decide between those two inlets um, going to that one outlet. Um, <coughs> so notice that it's called a G-switch. If we make what's called a, a switch object um, with um, a, well, notice that it, it has two inlets, so very much that same idea. Again, if I um, it's exactly the same thing. You notice the left-hand inlet determines whether the switch comes from one inlet or the other inlet, just as it does uh, the, the, the um, toggle would determine whether it comes from the left or the right inlet here, and they both have one outlet. So basically these are essentially the same object. Um, they just look a little different. Um, <clears throat> but we're, again with the switch you can determine how many inlets are, av are available to you um, so if I were to put in 4, um, and um, I have, well, I'm going to use these number boxes since they're already here. Although you wouldn't, um, actually, just to, to avoid confusion, I'm going to get rid of the outlets from gate, because we don't need gate anymore. Because you wouldn't really set it up in that configuration. Um, we will have one additional number box to control which of those inlets it's going to receive from, and then another one... To, uh, to actually output our data. So once again, none of these will output any data while the gate is off. But if I change it to a number one, whoops, one, there you go, uh, then the first outlet is received, but none of the others. If I send a number two, then only the second outlet is going to send the data, and so on. Okay, so that's the switch object. Now the switch object doesn't have a, an equivalent, a strict equivalent in um, MSP. It does in function, but not in name. For some reason, instead of being called switch, it's called selector, which is what you see over here. <coughs> but it performs exactly the same function. So if we put selector 4, um, then you see four, four available inputs plus, plus a, uh, a controller in inlet, and then just one outlet. So here I will choose um, two inlets, because I have two available um, uh, oscillators and I can connect those two up to there to the fir first and uh, sorry, second and third inlets Ugh, have I, there you go, some reason I lost that and I will get rid of these ones that go directly to the multiplication object um, and then I need a number to <coughs> determine which of those it will come out of and I'm going to have to stop there I think because I'm out of time yeah, nearly. Um, OK, just, just quickly to say that if I send a number from this number box, um, it, it operates in that way. So I'm sending a 0 to switch off. If I s turn on number 1 then and press a note, we get a sign tone output. If I s select number 2, we get a sawtooth output. Um, so we're using the numbers to determine which of those we're choosing. Um, but you notice that that is not the same as what we've got over here. We've got a different object, which again I'm going to have to talk to you about in another tutorial.